You know what? You don't got the right away. I've been studying for the driver's test. So today we're gonna do a little bit of running around. We're going to the PO box. We're gonna go to T maybe T Mobile because I gotta get a new phone and I'm gonna attempt to try to get Dave on the family plan. Boy, Dave, I should be claiming you on my taxes, kid. Kind of do, don't you? I kind of. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Totally different conversation. Let's go ahead and switch gears right now. That's the running around that we got to do. We're going to bring you guys along for that. But I've got some crazy things I want to talk with you guys about as well. And I think the first premise to this video is going to be called how to not get a job after prison. And the reason that I'm saying that and where I'm going with this is we're just leaving my fiance's work and you know she's a manager at her job and they've been looking for a new maintenance guy and you know they're very awesome people up there everybody who works up there is just really really friendly really helpful really nice there's my plug for my fiance's job but again they've been looking for a, a new groundskeeper and this guy came in trying to get a job and on his application he wrote that he had embezzlement charges now, just because you're a convicted felon doesn't mean that you can't work at certain jobs, including this job in particular. But certain felonies are definitely going to make it a lot harder for you to get a job. And an embezzlement charge, working, well, I don't know. An embezzlement charge is just a bad charge to have in general because that means that you've stolen money, probably and most likely from a place that you've worked at. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Um... I don't know as uh I mean yeah that's what it would that's what it implies but as the groundskeeper would he have any opportunity to touch anything dealing with money besides his check you never know you never know and, and, you, and you're probably right you're probably absolutely right about that however again you know certain felonies are going to prevent you from getting certain oh, yeah. jobs and just because you write on the application that you know, you've been convicted of a felony, no matter what that is, you're up front. That's a, that's a good thing to be in some instances. You know, I remember being in prison and going through some of these re-entry programs where they would tell you, you know, if you don't want to write down that you're a convicted felon and you don't want to write down exactly what your charge is, where it asks you if you are a convicted felon and if so, please explain, you know, they tell you to write, you know, if you feel uncomfortable putting what your, what your charges are, and they tell you to write, would like to talk about it in person and I'm not sure that's a guarantee shooing to get you any further in the application process but maybe maybe sometimes that does work in my own personal opinion I feel like that's never gonna work oh he wants to talk about this in person he wants to tell me about that that that, that crazy charge he got yeah I always thought that was kind of weird I just put no <laughs> or you can lie about it and just Test the water, see if you get caught. Sometimes you will, maybe sometimes you won't. But then when they bring me in for the interview, I'll be like, hey, um. I accidentally wrote no when I meant to write yes, and boy. Let me explain. I got some drug and arson charges, and I ain't talking about nothing dealing with narcotics and fire. You immediately just go into your grandpa voice. So, um. <laughs> see, what happened was. Uh, yeah, uh, next. Next, hey, you know what? It's actually my lunch break. Hey, listen here, you got a stupid son of a uh, god. It's my lunch break, uh, granddad. Uh, whatever, Herbert. We're gonna need you to get up out of the office right now. Security, Cody. Cody, we're gonna need you to escort Herbert. Am I going to lunch with you. So, we're not going to the candy store, Herbert. So, can we go to the park? The whole point of this conversation about you got a point? how to not get a job after prison is look this guy wrote on the application he had an embezzlement charge okay he called up there trying to find out any further information but i guess he called like a million times and i don't know if somebody answered the phone i don't know if he talked with anybody but then he showed up and he was like yo i done called up here eight times about my application what y'all doing and at this point they were like you know what maybe it wasn't the embezzlement charge maybe it was how he approached this whole situation that really was the reason he ain't getting this job they were like um sir because of your embezzlement charge we're just going to go ahead and neglect the fact that you're coming in here very hostile we just can't hire you and i guess at this point he began to fly off the handle they had to get the other maintenance guys up in there to like escort this dude out of there and these women my fiance included they're like super scared now feeling like you know what if this dude comes back i told her i said if this dude comes back you call me 
And Dave, I'm gonna throw you my bank card. You just make sure you bond me out. Cody, I'm gonna throw you my bank card in case me and Dave need to be bonded out. But yo, you just ain't gonna be going up in my fiance's yeah, workplace. You might wanna just give the bank card to Cody. You just ain't gonna be going up in my fiance's workplace acting like you some kind of deranged lunatic. And you ain't seen no deranged lunatic yet. What are you gonna do, Joe? Dive right in? You damn right. I'm gonna walk in there like, yo, you the guy? You the guy that's acting crazy in here? Mama. I got you right. 911. Uh, yeah, we got a deranged <laughs> lunatic up here right now. He's hitting me as ow, as he's, we ow, as ow, ow. He just hit me four times. He's also got an embezzlement charge. Can you send the FBI? That's <laughs> so what I'm gonna do. Think you can go up in there and act crazy? Got nothing coming. The police is what's coming. So. But look, you know, if yeah. you're a convicted felon, you're trying to find a job, look, I understand, believe me, I know. It is not an easy task trying to go fill out these applications, putting down, you know, trying to be forthcoming about what your criminal history is like. But you just gotta keep trying. And you definitely can't be flying off the handle at a place where you're applying at, thinking that's gonna do you any favors. You're lucky you're not locked back up right now. And I'm talking to you. The guy out there with that embezzlement charge. That's not how you do things. Because if I'd have seen it, you'd have already been locked up. You'd have been locked back up. Oh, I'd have called, I'd have told on you. Straight like that. But anyways, we're at T-Mobile right now. So let's go see if I can uh, get my phone fixed, get a new phone, and get a family plan and see if I can get my son back here in the back seat on that plan. Hallelujah. Because my phone don't work. No. No, it doesn't. You've been looking at too much porn is the problem. I stopped looking at porn. Did you? Yeah, because my phone don't work. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Alrighty, alrighty. We leave a T-Mobile right now, Dave. How excited are you, man? I mean, I'm I'm happy that I'll have a better phone. So not very excited at all. I mean, I am excited. Not very grateful. Not not very anything, are you? No, thank you. Joe. No, Joe, you're amazing. Joe. I'm just asking. I mean, I'm, I'm just asking. The people are probably wondering. I this. say, I say thank you to you all. You know, I treat you better than a sugar daddy probably treats the young girl. That's almost what are, I, I almost. Are you, are you propositioning me right now? Nah, nah, dog. That's not what I'm doing at all. So I just added Dave on my plan at T-Mobile. I've been a T-Mobile customer now for a little bit over a year. They've been really good to me. T-Maybe sometimes, T-Mobile the other time. Meaning that sometimes I get service and sometimes I don't. But with that, Dave's phone, it's a smaller, cheaper Walmart phone. We bought it for him when he first came home from prison, and he is definitely, boy, he's he's used up all the memory. He can't get into Facebook. He can't be doing no snap facing, whatever those apps are called. He can't be doing anything. And a big part of the reason for that's probably because he's been looking at too much illicit material on his phone, but neither here nor there. He's about to have him a, a nicer phone. It's not gonna be an iPhone. It's gonna be a what? A seven? Uh, Samsung S8. Yeah, that's nice. Brand new. Brand new. You know, it's always an awesome feeling getting a new phone. So what do I have to do for you, Joe? You ain't got to do a damn thing. Just keep that Herbert voice back there in the back seat with your seatbelt on. You don't even got no seatbelt on, man. Dave don't care about safety. I do. So I upgraded my phone. Here's. <laughs> Here's a little inside information I'm gonna share this with you guys. So I traded my phone in and my phone's in, in great condition, minus the fact that the back camera don't work. And they got a checklist that they're about to go through checking the phone. And one of the things on there is camera. So, you know, they're probably gonna be calling this phone momentarily telling me, hey, uh, we just ran a checklist, a diagnostic test on your, on your phone and your camera don't work. So you know what I'm gonna say when they say that? What'd you do to it? What'd you, what'd you, what'd you do to my phone? <laughs> that wasn't me, that was you. You looked at that phone. That was I am gonna act like I didn't, I didn't know the camera wasn't working. The back camera only. The front camera works great. But you know, I film a lot on my phone, so I need both cameras working. Hence the reason why I wanted to upgrade this phone. I'm not gonna act like it was their fault though. I'm just gonna say I didn't know. I, I don't really ever use the camera. So we're gonna go to the PO box now. And you know, on this ride, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you guys. And the first thing is, look, in seven days, seven or eight days, I'm going to take the driving test, the written and the road test. And I know you guys are probably tired of hearing about that. You're probably tired of hearing about that jacked up F-250 Super Duty Diesel Extended Cap 4 Tools. 
I know you're probably tired of hearing about all that, but I'm not gonna talk about any vehicles right now. I wanna talk to you guys about me studying, because I have been studying. I've been taking these practice tests. I've talked a little bit about taking those tests. But I was taking a practice test this morning while I was on the toilet for the fifth time. That story will follow after this. But as I was taking this practice test, you know, they, they got these really crazy questions. They try to trick you up. And this one question came up that really just stuck out in my mind. It was a road sign question about a Y intersection. What does this sign mean right here? The top choice answer was a youth hostel ahead. What in the world well, for one, what is a youth hostel? Do you have you ever even heard of anything like that? No. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, that's bad. I mean, that's super bad. And then two, who was the person who was creating these questions who thought that that would be an appropriate answer to put on the test? You know, if they ask me that question while I'm taking the real test. I might have to put that. I might actually have to go up to the DMV teller and say, excuse me, this is just wrong. How in the heck would anybody think that a Y intersection sign would mean that there is a youth hostel ahead? Who in their right mind would think that that would be an appropriate potential answer to put on a damn driving written test? And I wonder how many people actually put that, that Y intersection sign, that's actually what it means. Oh, I, I, I remember this from the book. That means that there's a youth hostel ahead. <laughs> I, you know, I should have clicked on it. And when I, and if I did so, it probably would have said, you need to go downtown and register right now. And not for no driver's license, neither. There's also one other thing I want to share with you guys. And that is last night, I went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Cody, did I tell you about this? I saw your Twitter post. I went to Buffalo Wild Wings yesterday and I tried their hottest wings. All right, they're called the Blazing Wings. Now, when I was ordering my food, the, the bartender slash waitress, she said to me, you want the blazing wings? The blazing wings, the ones at the very bottom of that menu? You know how hot those are? I said, listen to me, fine woman. Not fine as in actually looking good, but listen to me, nice lady. I said, I just ate the death nut challenge. Have you ever heard of Pepper X? I ate that. So I ordered the blazing wing. And when they brought the wings out to me, another waitress who brought them out, she said, oh my God, you've got you've got blazing sauce on your wings. I said, yeah, I know, I, I don't even really like hot food. When I was ordering these wings, the bartender slash waitress, she said to me, she said, look, I'm not even supposed to allow you to order these wings unless you sample the sauce first because the kitchen staff gets really mad when I have to send the wings back because they're too hot. I said, I don't need to sample the sauce. I'll, I'll just, I'll try. I had four or five wings, I ate all four or five of them. They were hot, don't get me wrong, they were super hot, but they weren't that bad, I handled that. Handled that then, about an hour later, I started getting the stomach cramps from the potassium being sucked out of my stomach because of the ghost pepper that this sauce is made of. And then I've been on the toilet in the last 12 hours seven times. I can't even feel my Junies right now. Actually, I can, they're raw. Dave, I'm gonna need you, buddy. If I gotta hit this toilet one more time, it's almost uncomfortable to sit down right now. You're gonna need me to mist your booty hole. <laughs> That's terrible. That's just a bad, that's a bad wing. You ate a bad batch. That's all that is. You're mm. gonna be just fine. Your butthole still works. Now you sound like Cleveland. Yeah. Boy, you know how to hit, you know how to hit some voices, don't you? <laughs> you got in the wrong line of work at a young age getting into crime. You should have gotten into voiceover work. Voice over. That wasn't a good impersonation, whatever you were going for right there, but. That was just me. <laughs> oh, that was your voice? Yeah. Now, the reason that I wanted to tell you guys about this Buffalo Wild Wings blazing sauce is not to gloat about the fact that I'm a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and none of this hot stuff affects me at all. I'm not trying to do that, no. The reason I wanted to share this information with you guys is because they've got a challenge at Buffalo Wild Wings. And ladies and gentlemen, we doing the challenge. Cody, you want to get in on this? I mean, why not? All right, three of us, we're going to do, the, we're going to do a three-piece challenge. Man, the bridge is going up, man. And we're going to be the first car at the bridge, though. I think we can beat it. Yeah. I don't know, Cody. Dang, man, we're going to be here for a minute. Look, that moped made it through. He was the last car to make it through right there. Man, I hate going. I will, I will never. Unless I mean I have to. I've been over this bridge many a time on a moped. It sucks. It's scary, yeah. They've got a challenge at Buffalo Wild Wings. 
And I'm not honestly sure we can do it. I don't think I can do it. Maybe these other guys can. But this is the challenge. And just listen to how twisted this is. You have to eat the blazing wing sauce. And you have to eat 12 wings in six minutes. 12? 12. Dude, I don't even eat 12 wings when I'm normally just eating regular wings. That's a lot of chicken wings, man. Cody, do you think you do that? I mean, I eat like 20 when I go there. 20? Cody, we're getting you in the gym tomorrow morning ASAP. Dave, you think you could eat 12 wings in one sitting? Yeah, I usually eat about a dub. What's a dub? 20. 20? 20. I don't know, man. That's a lot of chicken wings, man. If we can eat 12 wings in six minutes with the blazing sauce, that's only one part of this, okay? They're not making it easy for you to accomplish this because there's a whole nother dynamic to this challenge. And are you guys ready to hear what this is? Oh God, here's, oh God, I know this is gonna be T-Mobile. Hello? Hey, this is Joe Fogg. Hi. This show from T-Mobile is helping you on Yeah, hey, how you doing? Good, um, I just wanna let you know the machine I started, it says an hour and 10 minutes, so, you know, take your time, you don't gotta rush, I just wanna give you an update. Uh, if it speeds up, I'll hit you up. I greatly appreciate it, thank you very much, man. No problem. Bye. Right, bye. I just knew that was the phone call calling about that camera. Whoo! My little Junie's got tight and they roll right now, y'all. God, it don't feel good to be sitting down at this bridge. So they're transferring all the data over from my other phone. But look, there's a whole nother dynamic to eating 12 wings in six minutes. You guys ready to hear what this is? They tell me that when you do this challenge, they cook the wings immediately right then and there. 12 of them, or however many. It would be, uh, what's 12 times three? 36. Is it? Damn, how did I come up with 54? But anyways, however many wings it is, they cook the wings right there on the spot, and then they bring them to you immediately. Take them fresh out, throw them in the sauce, put them in, take them out. What you're supposed to do. But, dude, they're, they're going to be too hot temperature-wise to try. You're going to be like... <laughs> I mean, I'm saying if they 400 degrees fresh out the frying pan into the fire. So we're going to try this challenge. We can't do it. We, Dave wanted to go do it today. My hind parts just won't allow that to happen. It's bad. It's really bad. We're leaving from the P.O. box, trying not to get hit by cars. There's all sorts of cars trying to come in. Everybody's driving ridiculous. It's raining. It is raining. Yo, we got so much stuff in the back of this truck right now from the P.O. box. So much junk in the back of the trunk. Man, and I know we got some hot sauce. One of them was from a fiery hot, I don't know what it was from, but we're going to be opening this stuff up if you guys want to see what we got because we got some big packages. I'm talking about the biggest packages I've ever seen in my life. Wait. Say what? Wait a minute. Dang, look at your Dodge 2500 though. With your drop down tail hitch. So, uh, you've seen some pretty big packages in your life, Joe. Why you gotta bring that back up, man? I was trying to, like, get off that conversation, Dave. You're trying to get off looking at the packages, Joe? How would you like to have that job right there driving around Port of Johns? <laughs> so, what you do for a living? Oh, you know, I mean, I, I'm a driver. What do you mean you drive? You drive for Uber? You drive for Order Up? You drive for Offer Up? What you, what you drive for? I, I'm just a driver. I'm a, I got a CDLs and I drive. I'm a poop taxi. <laughs> <laughs> what? A poop taxi? Yeah. I mean, delivering them is one thing. Cleaning them out is totally another thing. I know a place in Virginia Beach where they do that at. More where they clean them out? Yeah. I bet you they hire people coming home. Dude, they will hire anybody. And they pay good. Do they? Yeah, they they start... Because it's, it's pretty much every day they're cleaning porta johns. You know what I'm saying? And they start like 15 bucks an hour. Damn, I'm about to go get a job with them. You want to go get a job? No. You won't work there. You would not work there if you couldn't get no job nowhere else. If you crapped all over your bathroom and was like, Dave, clean it up, I would quit. We're going to test that theory. Okay. I almost tested it this morning considering I've been on the toilet seven <laughs> times for 12 hours. <laughs> oh, that's funny though, ain't it? That's funny, Dave. I mean... I'm telling you, the stuff that don't make the videos, y'all... <laughs> Dave just tried to embarrass me in T-Mobile, y'all. <laughs> That's what happened. So, we went back. Get your laughs out, Mr. Giggles McGee. Get your laughs. 
Okay, I better now. All right, so we went back to T-Mobile trying to pick up uh, my phone and Dave's new phone. We only got one of them right now. Mine's still transferring data. But Dave, you got that brand new phone right now. Hey. hey. Unlimited everything. She fancy. It's a good feeling having a, a brand new phone and a better phone. Dave's phone was, he wasn't able to get onto anything because he didn't have any memory left. That was the issue. There was something I was getting ready to say about, oh yeah, Dave tried to tell the people in T-Mobile they told me, they said, hey, look, um, you got how many days, 30 you days? Two, you get two weeks to... To return the phone if you don't like it. And then Dave said... <laughs> I said, so... I said, that's good. So, you know, if we break up, you can bring the phone back. <laughs> Joe was like, in front of like three T-Mobile employees. <laughs> ah, shut the up, Dave. I didn't say that. What did he say? Did I say that, Cody? I don't even pay attention. That's right. Said. That's right, Cody. <laughs> so you better, you better hop on. <laughs> it's always gonna be two against one, no matter what. Um, hey, look. And what's funny is if it's if it's Cody and it's not me, it'll be me and you against Cody. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it would never be me and Cody against you because we both would look at each other and be like. Hey, I think that place in Virginia Beach where they're cleaning out them Porter Johns, I think they're hiring. $15 an hour. $15 an hour. The good thing about getting two phones through T-Mobile, this is not a plug, because T-Mobile, in my opinion, is T-Maybe. They only work some of the time. Not all of the time. But the good thing about this is I get free Netflix now. So if you guys know any good Netflix shows that I need to be checking out, please comment down below because I don't have Netflix. And now I do. I think we both do. I got my phone. That's cool. My phone looks exactly like my other phone because it's the same case and everything like that. But I went from a 7 Plus to an 8 Plus. Nothing major. Uh, my back camera just didn't work in that phone. I also added Dave. You know what? You don't got the right away. I've been studying for the driver's test. Sorry. I don't know what just came over me. Could you imagine me as a driver instructor? It would go exactly like that. Hey, I'm just wondering. Cody is still going to drive us around, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't think for a second when I get my license, though, I ain't driving all day. Cody, you're going to be sitting in the passenger seat like me. Yeah. It's going to be Cody's day. I'm going to be holding on to the ocean handle. <laughs> all day, Cody's going to be like this. Uh, Joe, Joe, uh, break, break, car! Check this sucker out right here. This is huge. And this actually came to us from Australia. And there's supposed to be a bunch of stuff in here. So we're going to open this thing up and see what's in here. See what kind of cool stuff we got. And I want to say a real special shout out for this first package, again, from Australia, from Kath. She's an awesome supporter of After Further Show. She rocks with us on the Patreon. And this is super exciting right here. Oh my God, look at this. What's this, a jersey? USA's disqualified. Look at, boy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> man, look at all these jerseys, man. The whole team got jerseys. This one's coming up to us from uh, Donovan. And Donovan's an awesome supporter of After Further Show. He's on the Patreon. God, my stomach, man. It's going to be the eighth time I've gone to the bathroom in 12 hours. All right, I'm going to try to get through this. But shout out to Donovan for sending this. This thing is taped up like Fort Knox, man. I might have to hit the toilet. I'm thinking hot sauce. It says fragile. Now, he was telling me while we were streaming this morning, we were on Twitch streaming. If you guys ain't been rocking with us on these uh, Kicking the Bobo live streams, you need to do so. Join the Patreon. Get on the Twitch. We're on there in the morning times. There's a lot of stuff in here. Dude, dude. <laughs> that is about as cool as it gets right there. Yo, that is super sweet. Dude, we have got nothing but sweet stuff. This Today's been a, it's been a good day going to the store. It's like going to the store while locked up. This is commissary day, dude. We've got some, we got some turkey jerky. We got some what? king. Property? Property king? Hey. Hey, they just called my name property. See, I, I'm supposed to have an after prison show sign coming in. <laughs> See, you got commissary and then you got property. Dude, this thing They call your name to go to commissary, sweet. but if they call your name to go to property, it's either going to be a really, really good day because the TV done came in, your JP4 player done came in, your CD player done came in, or it's going to be a really bad day. They're calling you down there for a surprise PP test. <laughs> yeah, that's... Guerrero, property. Yes! I didn't... I, but I ain't... I ain't, ain't ordered nothing. I didn't know. Get your... So this is airmail right here. I'm going to open this one up while Dave opens that one up. This is coming from the United Kingdom. 
that. They sent you a straight razor. Oh, it doesn't have the razor in it. The blade in it. Oh, that's nice. Let me see. Are you sure the blade's not in it? Yeah. I'll show you. Oh, there are the blades right here. Yeah, I used to have something like that. There's no letter in here. Whoever sent this to me, special shout out to you. We got two last things that we're gonna open up. This one comes from John M. Hard from Kajan's Fiery Food Company. Well, this probably goes without saying that this is probably gonna be something spicy. I think it sucks. Oh, that's nice. What is it? Do you really wanna know? Pepper X. Well, it's, off, it's hot sauce. All right. And it's only got six million Scoville units. It says it right on the side. God, what y'all doing? Don't, don't you wish you would have listened to mother? Is it extract or is it sauce? Uh, it says hot sauce. Honestly, you don't have the stones. Just put it back. That's what it says on the top. Let's read the rest of this thing. It does not discriminate and it does not show mercy. Those that tangle with Black Mamba 6 are only left with one thing. Regret. You have been warned. Dude, it looks like something you would get <laughs> maced with. Yo, nah, it's like you went deep in the woods to some like witch doctor and he's like, here, drink this, it'll cure your herpes. It's I hope it's a bikini. It's a shit. It's a sheer. Shout out to everybody who sent us just so much awesome stuff. <laughs> to Donovan, to Kath, to whoever sent this shirt to Dave. Yeah, this is really good. To John M. Hard who sent us this six million Scoville heat units black mamba. Thanks. Stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the straight Wait. razor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna hook Joe up with the straight razor. You know what we should do? We should eat the black mamba number six. While I'm edging you up with the straight razor. I mean, that's your throat. But a real special shout out to everybody who sent us all of this awesome stuff. I mean, it's just, it was a good day to go to the store. It was a good day to go to property. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I, I like my new t-shirt. We didn't get called down there for any crazy reasons like a pop-up pee-pee test. Dude, this is nice. That is so awesome right there. These jerseys, all of the stuff that we got from Australia from Cat, so awesome. No working worries. Riding dirty. What? And just really, really cool stuff. <laughs> Dave, you don't even know how to act, man. I'm trying to <laughs> Dave, you're not going over the cat tower. Leave Aggie stuff alone. Thanks to all of you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted. And make the most. You just made me feel like I did something wrong. No, you didn't. Go ahead. And make the most of every day.